Hello and welcome to The View from the EBRD. My name is Stephanie Linhart and I'm here with Anna Bjerde, Director of Strategy and Operations for Europe and Central Asia at the World Bank. Hello, Anna. Anna, you cover a region which suffers from slow economic growth, in compa compared especially also to other developing regions. Um, what would you say, what can the World Bank especially do there? Well, thanks, Stephanie. Um, indeed, um, the Europe and Central Asia region is going through a tough time, and uh, our estimates for this year, for 2015, it actually has to grow at 0%, which is down from the two previous years, which has been around 2%, and of course, compared to global average growth at about 3%. And I think it's important to understand a little bit what's behind this, and what we see very much is that it's two trends. One trend is basically around the countries that are more interlinked with the Eurozone, where we're starting to see some encouraging um, progress, uh, particularly thanks to, of course, the QE um, package that's been approved, as well as actually benefiting from the lower energy prices, and then also, at least to date, quite limited impact from what's happening in terms of the financial turbulence in Greece, as well as uh, the situation in the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So overall, we see uh, growth picking up a bit, and I think our estimate now for 2015 going forward is at just above 1%. But contrary then in the eastern part of the uh, region, which is the countries that uh, really cover the Russia, Central Asia, South Caucasus, we're seeing a situation where because of the lower energy prices, uh, countries are really having a hard time. And it's very much related to the uh, reduction, of course, in the revenues that uh, come in, but also the remittances because of the reduced space for um, essentially sending home remittances but also the uh, situation with trade flows in general being down. So here we're seeing a, a growth going down by about 2.8%. So there are some exceptions, and I think it's noteworthy to say, for example, here in Georgia where we are, we've actually seen uh, a little bit more of a positive growth uh, trend than the rest of the countries in the East, and that's thanks to uh, reforms that have been undertaken for some time. So in terms of the World Bank's uh, role here, well, it's, it's, very, it's very comprehensive. We've been in the region uh, really for a long time since transition, and even longer if you include, of course, Turkey. And we have very, very substantial programs really across the whole region. And we work through uh, mainly three instruments, which is financing, knowledge, and convening. And if you would like, I can speak a little bit about each. Yeah, explain, explain a bit the both, both, both parts. OK, great. So uh, on the financing, um, we are a pretty big player in the region. We have an active portfolio of about $30 billion. And we add commitments of about $6 billion each year. And they range from um, really uh, supporting reforms to supporting specific investments in, in countries. Uh, and then we also do a lot on the knowledge front, and we have, a, have an instrument we call reimbursable advisory services. We call it RAS, which is really when client countries pay us for knowledge, advice, and services. And this has grown to about $100 million today across about 100 engagements. Mm -hmm. And then finally have what we call con convening, which is when we really try to bring countries together to work on issues that are of common interest. So here we're doing a lot of work, for example, around the Danube on... Um, uh, water management issues. There's 14 countries around the Danube that share this water resource. And we're also doing quite a lot of work on issues related to both energy and water as well as climate change in Central Asia. Mm -hmm. Very comprehensive, comprehensive work. Where would you say, which countries are the most receptive to your work? Well, I would say that um, uh, most countries, all countries are, are receptive, really, uh, to the work that we do. And I think it is because we, we take a very country-based uh, approach. So with each country, uh, we define a strategy together um, that makes most sense where the clients would like us to be involved and where we feel we have comparative advantage vis-a-vis uh, -vis other players to be able to provide value-adding services. So we're really active in all countries across the region, and it really depends um, across those three instruments, the financing, the knowledge, and the convening, really depends on what the countries are looking for from us. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at maybe the Caucasus region, what are specifically the Caucasus countries looking at? 
Um, continued, I would say uh, a, it's a good balance between, again, working on the reforms, and again, the World Bank is a pretty significant player when it comes to supporting structural reform programs uh, using what we call our budget support instrument, where essentially we provide support to the budgets mm -hmm. uh, uh, against also uh, structural reform programs that the governments have put in place. And we have those pretty much across the South Caucasus, particularly in Georgia. Uh, we've just um, entered into a programmatic approach that looks at both the uh, private sector development and competition and competitive no competitiveness as well as service delivery. So those are two big programmatic approaches that we're now going to be working together over the next few years. And likewise in Armenia we do a lot of work also on the structural reform side. And besides that it's quite a lot of infrastructure uh, development as well. Um, in Georgia we're doing a lot of work on regional development tourism which is uh, great because the endowments here are so significant and so important for uh, revenue from the tourism industry especially. Uh, likewise, in Armenia, we do a lot of work also on service delivery, and likewise also in Azerbaijan, we have a very big portfolio in the water sector. Mm -hmm. Okay, well lastly, as we are in Georgia um, today at the EBRD meeting, um, how would you say, how, how developed is it? What's the poverty situation like? Wh where are we here? So, um, Georgia has made great progress, and um, as I mentioned, it is one of the exceptions, if you wish, if you will, when you compare it to um, the overall situations in the more eastern side of the region. Um, and it's also, I think, it's noteworthy to say, you know, we do this uh, doing business uh, uh, review every year in the World Bank, and Georgia actually ranked 15 out of 183 countries mm -hmm. uh, last year, which is quite remarkable, and actually is at par with many very well-performing EU member states, for example. So that's very good. Um, and uh, the, some of the reforms that have been undertaken is really spurring this because it's really spurred by private sector development, private sector investment, as well as public consumption that has, has been relatively strong. But it is also important to note that Georgia has among probably the highest rates of poverty still in the region. Mm -hmm. And this is really quite concerning. So if you look at just a few years back, um, the level of poverty at $2.50 a day in terms of, um, of if you put that as a ceiling, we have just over 40% actually living in poverty. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very serious. So uh, you've, you have to really work on both fronts, continue this big push for reforms, which Georgia has done so very, very well, and at the same time, work on addressing these issues of poverty. And as I was mentioning, I think uh, some of these programmatic approaches that we have now together, focusing both on the private sector and com competitiveness side, but also on the service delivery, which really is at the heart of ensuring that the welfare and opportunity for the poor and the vulnerable can really improve. So in, in a nutshell, really, uh, we have a lot of work still to do. And uh, I think we're very encouraged by the commitment and the track record of the country so far, but there's still, still work to be done. Anna Vierde from the World Bank, thank you very much.